Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of Kendra Engineering College. In today's video session, we'll check out how the design of the counters has to be carried out using D flip flops. In the previous video session, you would have all observed how the design can be carried out using D flip flops. As it is already explained to you people, the design of the counters can be done using any of the flip flops, and the choice of the flip flop is up to you what you would like to take. So the flip flop. What I'm taking for the design of the counters in today's video session is D flip flop. So let us check out how the design has to be carried out. But before going on with the design, let's check out the question. So the question is reading: Design a mod 8 counter or design a mod 8 synchronous up counter using D flip flop. So the first thing what comes across to me here is they say it's a mod 8 counter, isn't it? They say it's a mod 8 counter so when it comes to be a mod 8 counter i know that i need to be taking three flip flops and as it is an up counter i know the counts has to be going from 0 to 7 it has to go from 0 to 7 giving a count of 8 so taking three flip flops i'll be designing a counter which will be counting in the upward fashion also i'm pretty much sure that the flip flops what i'm going to take is the flip flop as it has been explained in yesterday's class, most of the things with respect to T flip flop and D flip flop, D flip flops which are used for the design of the counters are almost the same. So before getting into the design part, we will look into the state diagram or state table and transition diagram of D flip flop. So moving on, let's check out how it is to be done. See here, this is how the design has to be done. So getting back to the state diagram we can see uh, this is my one state 0 is one state and 1 is the second state so i need to write the state diagram for this so if the state has to be changed or if i refer with respect to the characteristic table if q is the present state and if i want the next state to be 0 the input that has to be given is 0 itself as i know my d flip flop is a transparent flip flop if 1 is the present state and if i want the next state to be 0 the input what has to be given is 0. If 0 is the present state and if I want the next state to be 1, I want to give the, I should be giving an input of 1. And if 1 is the present state and if the next state should also be 1, the input that should be given should be 1 here. So this will be represented in the excitation table as it is given here. The same has been copied down here. So this is the present state and this is the next state. So the next state, whatever I am intending to get will be written as such as the data inputs because my D flip flop is a transparent flip flop and copying the same into the transition diagram you can see it has been done if 0 is the present state and if I want the next state to also to be 0 what should be the input given that should be 0 if 1 is the present state and if I want the next state also to be 1 normally the input given will be 1 if 1 is the present state and if I want the next state to be 0 the data input given should be 0 if 0 is the present state and if I want the next input given to be 1 then the data input should be 1. So normally when I speak about the design of counters, I will be going with the design using T flip flops or D flip flops just because in case of my transition diagram, I find the things easier. You need not be giving two inputs. Instead of giving two inputs, you can be managing with one single data input in case of your D flip flop and T flip flop. So moving on with the things as we all know, we will go get back to the same diagram what we have here. So let us note down the present state and the next state what we have done in yesterday's class. So I need to be counting from 0 to 7. So it is going from 0 to 7 and this is the next state. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. After 0 the next state should be 1 it should be 2, it should be 3, it should be 4, it should be 5, it should be 6, it should be 7 and it should be 8, isn't it? So the present state and the next state has been written as such with respect to your design which was done using the T flip flop. Later we need to check out what are the flip flop inputs that has to be given if the state has to be changed from that one to the other. Let's consider the state of C. So present state is 0. I want the next state also to be 0. So the data input given should be 0 here. 
present state is 0, I want the next state also to be 0. So, the data input given is 0 here. Present state is 0, I want the next state to be 0. So, the data input given is 0 here. Present state is 0, I want the next state to be 1. So, the data input given is 1 here. So, present state is 1, I want the next state also to be 1. So, the data input given is 1 here. This is all with respect to the transition diagram what we have studied. Present state is 1 and the next state is also 1. So, the flip-flop input is 1. Present state is 1, I want the next state also to be 1. So, the data input given should be 1. Present input is 1, present data is 1, next state should be 0 and the data that is given to the flip-flop is also 0. This is with respect to the input what has to be given to the flip-flop C. As I have explained, I will be taking three flip-flops. As I have explained, I will be taking three flip-flops. So, flip-flop C, flip-flop B and flip-flop A. So, this is C, this is B and this is A. So, the flip-flop input to this particular C or the data input to this particular flip-flop C has been noted down here. Very similarly, comparing the table of the present state of B and the next state of B, you need to fill up the flip-flop inputs of db and da. So, let us let's fill up the table and it has already been filled up here. The explanation has already been done with respect to dc. So, you can refer the same things or you can go to the transition diagram of the d flip-flop and you can start filling the table. So, once this table has been filled up as we have done in the previous video session, you need to copy or you need to transfer the data that is present in this particular truth table to the k-map. So, dc, db and da the values has to be copied to the k-map. So, it is done here. You can see here the values from the truth table has been copied to the k-map here. So, if you check out here, this will be of c. So, let us go back. Let us see that it is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. When I am writing it, I will write it as 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 6 and 7. This is how I will be writing it. So, here I can see this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. The values from that particular table has been copied down here and you can find out, you can see here, you can find out that there is one single one here or you can check for the octets. Octets are not possible. Squares are also not possible. So, what you can do here is, you can go with the pairs. So, what you find, found out here is, this is one pair. This is one more pair. This is one more pair. And you can see there is one single one that is left out here. One single one that is left out here. So, with respect to this one, with respect to this one, the, ter the terms or the terms of the equations are C dash B A. So, you can check out this is C dash B A, which has been noted down here, which has been noted down here. After that, you can find out the term corresponding to this particular group here. The term corresponding to this group is B dash and C. So, it is written here B dash and C. And the term corresponding to this particular pair, this particular pair is, it is, what is that? It is A dash and C. So, it is A dash and C. So, you can see it has been written here. And after simplification, you can find out this can be written as C XOR with B into A. Very similarly, the values what you have found out in the table for DB should be copied down here and you can find two groups. And the terms corresponding to these two groups are B A dash and B dash A which is B XOR with A. Very similarly, with respect to D A, you can find a quad and the term corresponding to this quad is A dash. So, you have found the equations or the inputs that has to be given to dA, db and dc of the counter. So, getting back, getting back. So, this is your c, this is your b and this is your a. So, your dA was a itself, right? So, you can re rewrite the equation. dA is a itself or it is actually it is a dash and db is a XOR with, XOR with B and DC is 
C X or with A B. If I am not wrong, let's get back to the equation and let's check it. Yeah, this is this is it that it is done here. So what has to be done is you need to be writing down the three flip flops and you connect the common clock input. You connect the common clock input. The input to that is D A input to D A which can be written as A XOR with one. A XOR with one will be A dash itself. So what you can do is you can write three XOR gates and you can XOR A with one. So input to D A is done. Coming to D B you can take output of D A which is A which is XOR with B which is XOR with B which gives you A XOR with B. Coming to D C it is all about A B that is you need to take A and you need to take B. So this is A B which is XOR with which is XOR with or this is actually XOR with C which is XOR with C. So this is your input. So this finishes of the design of synchronous binary counter using D flip flop. As I said in the previous video sessions, this table and this particular K maps are very important. Once these equations are with you people, you can design it. So this has been written as A XOR with 1. So as per the equation, as per the equation, the circuit diagram has been drawn. So this finishes up the design of synchronous binary counter using D flip flops. Thank you.